Hi, I'm Anna. And I'm Ben. And we are Autosave. Welcome to our channel. Today we're watching Attack on Titan, Season 2, Episode 11. I'm looking down at my notebook, and for the last two episodes, it looks like the manifesto of a psychopath. <laughs> um, there's like incoherent scribbling of quotes and words and like connections and time chronological stamps. numbers of timestamps. It's 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 a rough uh, it's a rough life <laughs> I'm living out here. Um, last episode, uh, we have Reiner, Bertholdt, Aaron, Krista, and Ymir all in tow to their hometown which is i don't even know anymore um crazy interesting episode uh last time we had a little bit of ymir backstory that left us with more questions than answers as far as i'm concerned um it seemed like ymir as well as everybody else in her in her what religious grouping in her in her whatever group that was in was stuck with a syringe and thrown off of a wall which then led them to be turned or become titans and then stuck in that form until ymir ate marcel and then she woke up in a desert with an amazing soundtrack does that happen every time a titan eats a human do they just hear great music i don't know what's going on anymore i don't know what's happening <laughs> i feel like once we learn everything last episode is going to seem so big to us if you know what I mean, like once we understand what that information means and how we saw, like once we truly understand whatever is the actual kind of truth of the past and and how Titans came to be and how they're actually created and who Ymir was and the blood of the king. And once we truly kind of get all just the history and truth we're gonna look back and be like oh my gosh that was them getting stuck with the syringes and turned into titans i think it's gonna like be even bigger to us once we know everything agreed just to rattle off some uh random ramblings uh, that don't really make any sense that are not my timestamps. um marcel marcel is friend coordinate coordinate if Aaron turns out to not be the coordinate, our job's not over. Search. Krista's gonna make it easier. Five years ago, she ate. 60, 60 years off the wall. Lady Ymir, immortality, blood of the king. Hoodie, question <laughs> mark? Ooh, um, and then we connected Marcel to Marco. You did that, correct. I get the vibes, and then it was a great connection of, like, could that have reminded them of Marcel on the rooftop with Annie? Yeah, like you was were that saying, why was they great. were so emotional? And yeah, I loved that. Um, yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think I got some timeline stuff wrong. Noah was texting me something and I didn't really understand because I think he was like treading around it. Um, I got the year eight fifty three because of a uh, three year training. Mm -hmm. but I'm thinking that again probably wrong but I'm thinking that it's 850 now and the three years happened uh, at, before then like the three year like it was 850 now after the training oh I mean everything we started at 845 844 was Mikasa I'm not really sure. Um, I'm going to try to get like a non-spoiler non chronological <laughs> thing. Of what we've already experienced. Because if I'm being frank, I'm not trying to look up anything. If I'm right, wrong about whatever, I'm not trying to correct myself because that's a stupid risk I'm not trying to take. Um, but if we can get Mr. Cicerone to help, that'd be nice. Uh, just a call us out where we have been wrong potentially it's like okay if we're wrong don't tell us but if we're just like 
talking out of our ass somewhere that we've made up like a canon. I wouldn't really want to go forward with that. Yeah, you know? like if one of our theories is wrong, we wouldn't want to know that. Yeah. But if we're like quoting a a date of something happening and we've been told what the date is, then I don't think it's a spoiler to be corrected on that. So from my understanding right now, as I'm looking at my like first four episode listing, 845 was when the attack happened. Um... They went through three years of training, so it would be presumed that two, it was like two years in between the attack and then when well, they started training, the training to get to 850. I think I had taken the date 850 and then I was like, oh, that's when they started training. Three years of training, 853. That could still be right, but it also could be wrong. I have no idea, but let's just continue with an open mind that who knows what the fuck is going on because it's not me. <laughs> All right, you good? Yeah. Cool. <gasps> That's an angle we hadn't seen before. Did you see the abnormal as well, hiding behind the tree? No. Again? This is again? Like, I think last episode we had seen a couple of the military police getting killed. Oh, they were, like, the first ones to die. Well, they're also yeah. probably the less trained to this environment. Yeah, but that being said... This, in general, is not an ideal environment for our scout regiment, for our military. Well, we just left the wooded area, and now they're all chasing after them. It's like a sandwich, an undesirable sandwich. <laughs> you know, we have not gotten much more about the Titans The guy in the, the wall, you know, whatever. Also, Levi has been in this, like, zero percent. It's been, like, a couple days, like, since I the start of the season. I know, it feels like it's been a month. I'm I like, know. why hasn't he healed yet? Charge. Don't doubt it. Whoa. ライナーとベルトルトに付いていく。この壁の中に未来はねえんだよ。そんなに悪いところじゃない。フラワー。お前のこと。そりゃ巨人はそんなこと言わないだろうけど、すごい勢いで漂った。感謝の一つや二つあ
Charge. It's an even bigger sandwich. Oh my god. I'm like rooting for him, but I'm like, should it's I be? It's so difficult. That was such a cool shot. Using Reiner's distraction for the other Titans so they can easily kill them. Without Aaron. <laughs> Give your hearts. <gasps> Did you steal Horse's face? It's Mikasa. He's using Annie. <gasps> Is he lying or does he really know this? It doesn't matter. Oh. 
Erwin without an R? <laughs> Mika saw his like freaking broken ribs. Again. For sure. Oh my god, no. Do you know what that looks like? The one that ate no. his mom. No! That's just fucked the up. The titan that ate his mom. That's just so messed up. Full circle. You fucking. Yeah, no. No shot. That's a f coincidence. Like. Oh my god. What was that? There was a lot of crazy stuff happening there, and I don't know what any of it was. What? That went by, like, that was, like, so much stuff really quickly. It was a lot to process. <laughs> yeah, um, I love, I love Mikasa's resolve, um, just as her care, like, as a character and as her, um, I don't know. Like, I, I just love, I love Mikasa so much and, like, her determination when it comes to Eren. She had a great line saying, we'll get to it, I'm sure, but about how, uh, the, one, like, caring about the ones that she loves was solidified six years ago, which would make sense going by the, uh, if this year's 850, 844 was when Mikasa's backstory happened that we saw. Mm -hmm. So... That would tie in really well. That was just, that was amazing. And she has no room in her heart to care about anyone else. Yeah, the, these flowers. That they keep showing. They, they've they shown them so many times that they have to mean something. They have to have something I, mean, I guess it could deeper. just be that whole, like, imagery of, of that, like, life can come from nothing or even, like, a hope kind of thing. Or, like, it, to me, it almost makes me think that outside the walls... Is, is life, you know, life that they've never experienced? That's what the flowers always, always seem to be like to It goes me. with Ymir saying outside the walls isn't as bad as you think, right? Yeah. Um, and she start, She talked about the Titans as if they, you just kind of need to get to know them or something. The She had the line that was like, everybody has one or two things about them, you know? A fault. Everyone at least has one or two faults, yeah. She's not wrong. Um... So, during the whole conversation, um, between Ymir and Historia, her, like, confession, the reason I snatched you away was to save myself, um, like, I realized, like, I realized through all this, like, I was just trying to save myself, I if I'm honest, I could not buy it, like, it might just be me not receiving it 100% correctly. Um, I was confused on whether to buy it or not. Yeah. Because it didn't... Part of me was like, oh, well, that could totally be true. But then why I wasn't sure is because I couldn't figure out what her purpose for lying in this instance would be. Well, j maybe to make uh, Historia okay with coming with them. Like, it was interesting because... I wasn't going to say anything about it and just take it as fact until Connie brought it up again at the end of the episode. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh... Well, because Krista wouldn't have... It's, Krista's whole thing is she also... She wants to die. Yeah. She she wants to die with purpose. She, she wants to die honorably. It seems like she doesn't really care what happens to her life. And so it would not have worked if Ymir made the importance about Historia. Correct. So 
I get I think I think when when we say it like that it was definitely a lie on Ymir's part of knowing that Krista wants to protect Ymir so if Ymir says that Krista coming with them will protect Ymir then Krista will come with them I am with you like okay that, that was okay. my train of thought um within this speech I I don't know if it's the truth or not. I just have trouble believing it is. There was definitely what I believe to be some truths. Uh, one of them being, a long time ago, I stole the power of the Titans from one of their comrades. I wrote that down and I was... Is is that what the injection is? Is that like is that what she's calling it? But no. she didn't steal it. It was given to her. So like That doesn't make that sense. That doesn't make sense. One of their comrades. I take that comrade as Marcel... I think, uh, sorry, there's a really loud thunder and lightning going on right now. Wow. But um, I take it as they turned her into a titan at, uh, with that injection, threw her off of the wall, and then her eating Marcel. There was something special about Marcel that gave her the power um, Ooh, to turn to back to turn into back a human. And forth. Yeah, okay. to turn back and forth. Give her hum her humanity back, or so her sanity even. She did have that awakening scene last episode. Yeah. It felt like she was, um, her human body herself had returned to her. It's a weird phrasing though, because it said I stole the power of the Titans from yeah. one of their comrades. But like how I initially took it was like the power to turn back and forth. I could be wrong there, of course. But I, I'm I'm. Just gonna operate with that. Yeah. For right now, cause that that feels good. Um, so I'm just gonna go with that. There's also the knowledge of Krista apparently knowing the secrets of the walls because she's someone important in the church. Like she's, which Krista does not deny. Yes. In this setting. But I just didn't know that prior. Um, she's trying to make it believable that that's why she would want Historia. Um, and she tells Historia to save her. I I think I think it was just part of her to plan. push it home to really I, like I I, I think it. so, but I could be wrong. I don't know. It was just a vibe or a feeling that I got. Um, great imagery though. It does make you feel like of the beauty that is outside of the walls. Um, mm -hmm. I liked that. Um, Ymir broke. It, it was, like, um, different. Uh, there was, like, green smoke behind her. Mm -hmm. It's because she, like, and she was all, like, wet, I guess. She <laughs> ripped herself out just to have this conversation. And then back in. So, because, like, we have heard Ymir and Titan form talk, but I guess that wouldn't, either she came out because it wouldn't have been conv as convincing if mm -hmm. she was saying it in her Titan form, or it was more like she can only say limited amount of words yeah. in her Titan form. Either one of those, not really sure. Um, hey, if they were do if they were implying that y uh, Ymir had that power because of eating Marcel, then that definitely gives us the impression that Marcel was going to be a fourth member on that group. I think that I think when that happened, they were outside the walls getting ready for some of their missions. Mm -hmm. Why else would all of them be camping by themselves in in the middle of nowhere? And, I mean, um, it was five years ago, I believe. Could be wrong. I believe it was five years ago that Ymir ate uh, Marcel. And five years ago was the same year that the Colossal Titan broke through the walls mm -hmm. so um, they could have been like right outside the walls getting yeah. ready for this mission i'm i wonder if that's when annie implanted herself within the society yeah i'm one i was wondering why we hadn't seen um female titan during that day that yeah. infamous day maybe it was part of the plan i don't know um so we had mikasa kind of like be cracked a little bit and oh like playing peekaboo. It was such a creepy shot with her peeking so through to though. look at Bert Holt. I love it. I absolutely love Mikasa. Um, oh, Mikasa's lines coming up. There's only so many lives that I actually care about. My enemies made deciding that easy six years Which ago. Which I love how she phrases it like that. It's such a good line. Ugh. Oh. 
That, that's such it's a like good line. It's like she, there she's saying she doesn't even get to choose anymore yeah. whether she can care about anyone or not. She doesn't even have, like, autonomy over her own heart anymore because of these enemies. And that's, like, crazy amount of um, power and evil to give to them and control over her, her life. Yeah. And how she is now. And then she said, so you're mistaken to seek any compassion from me. That's like, it. Oh, she's such a cool character, bro. She's so cool. Like, because, I don't relate to her, but I still think she's cool. Yeah, because right now I'm all out of time and of room in my heart to care. Which, when you just said that, it sounded really cringy, but it didn't sound cringy when she said it. I know. <laughs> but... Uh, oh, and I love, okay, so now, right after she says that, we're all, like, chilling on Reiner's neck, having, like, little, um, get-together of all of the friends, minus those that have died, rest in peace, um, I loved that they all, it's like they tried this first, like, I know they didn't, like, talk about tactics beforehand. I got the exact same impression. it's like really cute, like, it shows that they all... Obviously, Mika's was there just to get Aaron, but like everyone else, Jean, Armin, Sasha, Connie, I think they're all there hoping that it's they're, some misunderstanding. It, it, it'll go. They'll get, their words will get through. They'll figure out the truth. They're all. They see these people as friends of theirs, and they're just confused. And it was it all a lie. It was very emotionally they're, charged. I, it was just they were all trying different ways to appeal to him to me, like, um, but. Uh, and then we got a little bit of backstory. Apparently, Bert Hold sleeps in odd positions that are an, a true art form. Which that I apparently could they imagine. all like started trying to guess if that could predict, predict weather, weather patterns. <laughs> um, love it. Uh, and then Jean gets really serious right after he says that, and he was like, "But you were able to sleep like that." Oh. Having done what you did. John is and such like, a good John, character, dude. Oh my gosh. He's such a good character. Um, John's a fave. I almost felt like, oh no, Mikasa, your like, truth bomb is going to like interrupt the <laughs> appeal that they are trying to make to him. But it definitely didn't. Because... Like, it did not interrupt it in the slightest because Bert Holt came through with the line, who the hell would want to kill people by their choice? I don't know where you and I mentioned it, Anna. I don't know if it was in last episode's discussion or one of the many conversations we have about the show in the car or anywhere else. But we were sitting there and talking and I was like, in their own right, more than anyone, there is a possibility that Bert Holt and Reiner are victims themselves. Yeah. Because that, like, we don't know the whole. We don't know anything. Uh, and we've seen them as children too. And, and can children really make decisions like that? And many, many, many episodes ago, we said that the show didn't seem like it was just black and white. And this is just another example of it to me because. They were children, right? From what we understand and the flashback we saw, they were children. Let's look at it from a different perspective of you are following the rules and the leadership of another party and all you know is what they believe. And if that's what you grew up with, their truth is your truth. Just that's how society works, you know? Mm -hmm. That's the history that you're taught. But when you as a child are put out into the battlefield and told that you have to do this thing, then you in your own right are, you have a side of your story that is at least worth listening to because that's a, you could be a victim in your own right in this mm -hmm. sense. Like, like by their own choice, who'd want to kill people? Like it's their fear and their self loathing mm -hmm. is so evident in both of them, I was really happy for this line from Bert Holt because we saw that Reiner had an inability to to process what he had done to the point that he, he split and he kept flipping back and forth and he couldn't be consistently one way or the other. And we saw that it was really hitting him like a mental break. And Bert Holt was the one that was true and calm to some extent he he wasn't breaking he wasn't showing 
remorse. He wasn't showing, he wasn't saying anything even on the trees when Ryder was saying all the things. Like, Bertholdt just kind of watched. And we finally saw, and I, I remember being confused by that. I was like, because Bertholdt only showed some form of sadness when he watched Reiner break in yeah. front of Ymir and Aaron. And that's when Ymir questioned him on it. But then when we saw that flashback of all of them supposedly watching Marco die, we saw him crying. And I was like, where is this emotion for Bertholdt? How does he actually feel? Because I feel like I can understand Reiner feels really messed up about what he's done. I mean, Reiner even like basically says the same thing himself like two episodes ago. And I was so happy to like have this kind of emotional flow from Bert Holt. I have a lot of sadness saying that Bert Holt is a very good warrior. Unfortunately. Um, because that's what honestly that's what it feels like. Um, the lines, but we just couldn't come to terms with our sins. The only time we had some respite was when we pretended to be soldiers. Like that like I man, it's um it's rough because there were moments in this show that it this episode that it's like you don't f you feel weird about who to root for mm -hmm. about rooting against these people because it's hard to for me. It's hard to openly root against these people because you f the way that it, the story is written is you feel for them. You really do. They make you feel for them. If you think about it, you did say Bert Holt was the one who's the true warrior right now. But in my mind, especially out of the two of them, Bert Holt's the one that's actually this whole time been living with what he's done. He pretended oh God, to be a yeah. soldier, but in some way he might even be envious of Reiner being able to compartmentalize it and separate from it to fully play because it got to the point where Reiner was fully playing a soldier believed he was one but for Bertholdt Bertholdt never forgot the reality of what he had done you're right and it's like he is living in the most hell because at least Reiner has that alter like like alter personality to like that he's like created with him within himself to deal mm -hmm. with this emotion right and he can feel like he can truly be friends with yeah. these people because he doesn't feel like he's but the one that's wronged them i feel so bad because like i so i like have felt a lot of emotions uh in this show and one that's developing more than anything right now is true uh like is is fear um I can gauge moments I've been scared in this show, like just like Titans, four characters, whatever. But the thought, like I, there were episodes ago that I was like, yeah, Bert Holt kicked in this wall to land on Aaron's house on purpose. And that might very well be the case. But if there's any line of thinking to imply that that was Bert Holt's malicious doing, that is completely wrong. The, the fear that I have in this show right now is the, the thought of power that someone or an organization or society could have over these two people to put them through this direct living hell and they have no say about it. They have no, like, they, they literally cannot say no in their own minds. What, like... And it's safe to say that when they did do it, they didn't even truly understand what they were doing. Exactly. So then after they realized what they did. Part of me is like, is it like a suicide squad thing? Do they have bombs in their necks? Why can't they? Is there a further reason that they can't deviate from a certain plan? Because in some stories, you might use this opportunity to write, okay, you're right. I will turn sides and fight with you. We don't know what's going to happen. But, like, is there some even more prevalent force, like, dictating and make sure they stay on this path? Doesn't he say something 
like at the very end of that conversation with everyone around the neck, like someone come get me or something. Yes. He said something at the very end that was really Someone con- find us. Someone find us. Neither of us have any right have But what does someone find us mean? But someone, please. Someone, please. Someone find us. That's like what it would sound like if your body is somewhere else. Like that's not your true body or they have something of yours that they're holding hostage to make you do this. It really does. Um, it's like, and in the context of the line beforehand that was like, we can't, we have no like right apologizing kind of thing. It's like, they're like, like we don't deserve. We we have no right asking this of you, but someone find this, or like someone find us, you know, um, which is like, what? I don't know. You you have like a really good like point there because it's like, I said like bomb in the neck like Suicide Squad, but if it is like a route of oh they are somehow like being projected into this body that Reiner and Bert Holt are in now and if they die here or if they deviate from a plan they their real bodies die and the only way to save them is to find their real bodies. Another clue for that would be Ymir saying she stole the power. Mm-hmm. So is this like a superpower situation of like that's not their like true forms or something? I don't I think it's really interesting to um, that line, the someone find us, because it didn't fit with the conversation right. that was being had. It felt out of place. I It wasn't clear who it was directed to. It felt like it was directed to the pack, right? Mm-hmm. The pack. Um, I like calling them that. Mika says the member of the pack that's like, fine, I'm here as long as, it, as, long as Aaron's here. You know, you know how last discussion we were talking about like some, like uh, my timestamp time, stamp, time shen- shenanigan, mm-hmm. minute men shit. How would that like, like just critically thinking? How would that fit the someone find us? Well, because don't they I say, don't like, know. Some find me in the future or something. Hmm? Or don't they always have lines like that in those time travel movies where it's like find me in the past, like Hal's moving castle or something, where like Sophie yells that at Hal like. Come find me. Well, the, there's that literary device, like the, the trope, I guess, or like uh, sometimes they use it in stories regarding like time travel. Is like, oh, let's go back and change things. And even mm-hmm. though that we change things and all this will change, we'll still find a way to be together in in, in that life. You know, we'll mm-hmm. end up together, like um. And that. In some of those cases, it starts an alternate timeline. There were, uh, yeah. Well, like, uh... Oh, like man. Orange. There, there, I'm, I'm not going to say what movie it is. Um, if I can find this moment in the discussion, I will put the movie title right here. Uh, oh, wait, hold on, wait. Spoilers oh. in three, two, one for this movie. Spoilers over. There is a movie that you have not seen, that I have seen, that... Uh, there's a couple, they go back, uh, one of them goes back in time, changes things, and because they changed things, the butterfly effect led the, uh, created the, his future to make it so they, the couple never met, but they had one of those lines like, oh, we'll find each other in any reality or any future where they still ended up meeting in a just different means because they were meant to be together. Mm -hmm. So in that similar vein of like storytelling, it could be like a broad connection of like someone find us like in a time, you know, Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, I guess it could just be purely figurative like find us as in rescue us from this situation that we're in find the us inside of us break us out of this um 
turmoil that we've been in mentally, like inside our heads. I don't know. It could be figurative, maybe, but I like to think it's not. You said superpowers a second ago, which yeah, goes great with the mid roll saying, mm. um, Special Titan Powers um, is the title. <laughs> among the Titans, there are those with special powers the intense, high temperature steam of the Colossal mm -hmm. Titan and the hardened skin of the Armor Titan are prime examples. It reminds it remains unknown how they possess such abilities. And the female titan has ice powers. Crystal. Ice. <laughs> um Crystal. You know ice. though, if they are being sent on a specific quest or mission and they were given these abilities um for that mission, I would assume they'd be given these certain abilities for that mission, you know? Like they they yeah. Abilities were picked out specifically for this mission. Yeah, which uh, is 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 Ymir, Since we already saw Ymir as a Titan before he she ate Marcel, mm -hmm. what was Marcel's ability gonna be? Maybe Marcel was like just super agile. Maybe, but we already saw what Ymir as Titan looked like before. Well, we saw what she looked like, but we didn't see her like agility. Yeah. Maybe that's what she meant talking to Reiner and Bert Holt about like, oh, you know that I'll be better in the trees, you know? Yeah. That would have... But I feel like that's not as cool of a special power as extra hot or hard. I don't know. I think it could be especially, ready, mind blown, especially if their main mission was to take place in the woods when Annie first went after Aaron. Would that have not helped Annie in that mission? It would have. A titan who had superior and most of the titans agility can't, with the um, trees. Wouldn't be able to hold themselves up. Wouldn't mm -hmm. be able to get themselves up with their arms. Mm -hmm. So it, it totally could be. Except for that one titan that jumped like a frog, that abnormal one that yeah. ate Thomas in the first season. Speaking of abnormal titans, I don't think there's a better moment to bring up that seemingly an abnormal titan just bit off Erwin's arm right i didn't even know if we we're gonna talk about that because there's like there's so much other things like emotional stuff yeah but it's but a it massive so moment crazy. and it is also emotional because i don't even know if words can describe how crazy and badass and devoted Erwin is to have barely flinched and just continued on with his command it makes you wonder what made him so dedicated to this what is his driving force it, it reminds me of the line that levi had about wishing he could see what erwin saw in terms of whatever the future could be and this instance like especially makes me feel how levi does that like i would follow this man because cur purely from this, like, I genuinely believe he sees or feels something. That is why he's so dang dedicated to this. I that agree. he still yells orders from his arm being in a titan's mouth. Yep. And being dragged away. And it's... How devastating is is this of a loss to you? Would you, have to t would you have to retire as commander? Like... It obviously doesn't have that much of, of an effect, I, I think. No, it would. Even with ODM gear, you'd kind of be fucked. No, you wouldn't? I don't know. It's just, like, how do you activate your, like, uh, like, uh, what? Ropes? You know? Mm. Your grappling hooks? That depends how hard, well, actually, it seems very clamped there on that arm. Uh. Be because, like, you obviously have, you'd have one sword. If it, it depends how much it would affect your mobility. Um, but I wonder if he's going to have to retire after this. Um, we see him again in a little bit, but But Armin, he still gets up there. He does get it. up here. So, so that's true. You're right. But, I mean, in the future, I think it probably would, uh impede i feel like he would still go on the missions he just wouldn't directly fight like this is the one of the first instances that we really see him kind of like involved directly and not just standing in the tree very true so Commanding. i feel like he would still go out there i agree 
Um, Armin had... <laughs> Armin. That's a that's the next topic we're getting at. It was, one, I think, one of, if not my favorite Armin moments in the show yet. Armin has um, good moments. He does. But this was a different side. He stung. This, he was like, I'm going in for the kill right now. This was like a sight, like a manipulative... Like, and you can just tell by how he's drawn, too. Like, I've never seen Armin's face. Like Where were we? We were about to ask if we believed um, Armin or it was just him being manipulative. Oh. Do you believe Armin or was it him just being manipulative? <laughs> I... I have a hard time... In regards to the torture? Yes, because as far as we know, she's still in a crystal and they can't figure out how to get into it and break it. But Armin, that would be a huge gamble for Armin, because obviously Reiner and Berthold would have a better knowledge of how strong the crystal form is, so they would know whether it was able to be broken or not. Yeah, I mean, it was pretty broad what Armin was saying, too, though, that, uh, that like, uh... It was her screams that taught us something. Um, that even with her body's healing, you can't get rid of the pain. You could say that about, like, any... Like, without torturing her, you could, like, easily make that assumption. You know? If you're Armin. So it could totally be false. They're torturing her, her every every way they know how. It could totally it be just a, mani a manipulative technique. His face doesn't look like he's telling the truth. Yeah, agreed. It looks like he's saying some crazy, horrible stuff, and he's trying to be really convincing about it, but I I believe that Annie's still in her crystal palace, as, as far as I know at the moment. I think he was, he, I think he was a, this is a distraction method. I think he knew that Mikasa was nearby, mm -hmm. and that he just needed to emotionally target Bert Holt for a second. Even if there was a split second that Bert Holt believed that Annie was being tortured, that split second is enough. It's an opening for Mikasa. And it was an opening for... Erwin. Erwin as well. I, I, he definitely slashed off the Cut off a finger, finger of... Titan. And across the chest of Bert Holt. Mm -hmm. Um... Obviously, we know he can heal, but they still feel pain. Yep. Um, I don't know. The, them bringing up the whole situation between Ymir and uh, his story again definitely made me question. With, like Connie and Sasha. Yeah, made me question the whole um, legitimacy of what Ymir was saying to Historia earlier in the mm -hmm. episode. But who knows? Um, Connie and Sasha immediately believe it's a lie what Historia was told by Humir. I don't know what the flowers mean, but they have to mean something. Right? That's... They're everywhere. And there's so much focus on them. And what does this mean? Why is... Why is the Titan that killed Aaron's mom still around? I mean, is it coincidence or not's the question, right? Like, I mean, it makes sense it would be around because it uh, would, but it's like, is it like a fuck you attack on Titan moment? Like, oh, you're just going to do I this think, to me? I think it's the mangaka just being like, wouldn't this just be the worst thing ever? Yeah. And you're like, yeah, that would be really traumatizing. Because you're correct. I don't know what else it would mean. Trauma. That's what it is. Like, at, like in I a story think, context. I, I think it just... I It's purely for entertainment value, I think. I think Aaron's going to become it's, a titan. It's so entertaining in a horrible way that it is this titan that we recognize from the very beginning. As a viewer, it is, like, the perfect choice. Um, I think Aaron's going to turn into a titan. He has to, because he has to pre protect Mikasa, because I'm pretty sure Mikasa is going to have a hard time swinging around and fighting because she definitely has broken ribs i think aaron's gonna turn on a titan out of rage seeing 
what that Titan is, who why, that Titan is. Why did it have to be an end of the episode? Because you were so right, and I want to see that emotion. I know we'll see it next episode, but, like, waiting. Ugh. I wonder how close in, like, actuality we are to the house in the basement right now. Ben. Hmm. What did I say at the end of last episode when Hans went and said that he would die for Aaron as he was charging off? If this, and who saved Aaron and Mikasa from time, this Titan? Hans. <sighs> oh, no. This is Hans' death. This is Hans, this is Hans or death. Hans' big moment where he redeems death. himself and does what he didn't last okay. time. Kill this Titan. Well, he... I'm being You're, glass okay, half full. That would be cool. That would I'm, be cool because that is not what he did last time. Yes. Week. He just grabbed Aaron. And, I mean, it could be a repeat. He could just grab Minkus and Aaron. He's, but he's probably going to try to save them by doing what he didn't do last I'm time. I'm optimistic. You're right. uh, I like that. Um, I would be happy about that. Um, yes, I'm that's happening. Being very pessimistic. I am optimist. It's going to happen. Positive thoughts. I feel I like will... normally I'm the optimist. If, and you're the pessimist, but right here I feel like I'm being the pessimist. It doesn't matter if in the written story or the already animated show, if what you are suggesting and Hans dying because it would make sense like from a literary point of view happened, I'm going to will my positive energy into existence <laughs> and it's going to change reality into yep. Hans not dying next episode. There you go. It's done. You good? Yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and we hope to see you next time.